Hey, it's Don, the Austrian Professor here. Today, I am going to do just an impromptu live show. The weather was terrible here. School was canceled across the entire town. Even some of the college morning classes were canceled. So literally, I have nobody here today for a first time in a long time. No one wanted to go out in the, the weather. Um, I actually went out of the driveway today, and the thing was just totally ice. I was lucky enough to get it back in without having to slide into the garage door or anything like that so anyway it, it's just been one of those mornings here so things have been uh, just kind of different than usual so I have some extra time so I thought I would shoot this out here I had some material that I was actually going to share in a video but since um, you know again I, there's nobody here today which is a, a very scarce event for me I'm going to um, discuss some issues I get asked all the time on wholesale now I don't go into a lot of detail on wholesale because, you know, it's it's somewhat our bread and butter during some times of the year. So I'm not going to go into a big detail on what we do. I'm going to touch on more and more of this as we go, maybe some retail arbitrage as well. But in general, we're going to start over on a, a page I'm going to flop over right now. And I'm going to address a little bit on starting wholesale, things that you need to do, things that we did. Um, just the basics here, just to give you uh, ins and outs on what to do for wholesale in general. The money's there. You just have to know what to do with it. You have to know how to address it and stuff. I'm going to pop up some, some information here on the screen. These are things that I did when we started doing wholesale. Obviously, the first thing you need to worry about is your business license. Now, for us, we originally started with a... Um, a sole proprietor, then an LLC, and now we're um, S-Corp too. So you've got to just address what you're doing. If you want to be in the wholesale game or, you know, the big wigs playing with big wigs and going to manufacturers and the actual factories, going to trade shows and things and actually purchasing items, you have to be set up properly. You have to look professional. You have to have, you know, all the aspects of a actual business. You know, it's not just one aspect. It's pretty much everything. Let me see. I got some folks on here. Welcome, everybody. The big thing here, obviously, once you get the license, is immediately go out and get your EIN right away. That gives you the ability to go right down to the bank and get yourself a business bank account. Those are the key things you're going to need. You're 100% going to need them. You can get a letter from the bank stating you know, you're financially sound. You can All this kind of stuff is, is information you need. Other things that I did is I have a website for wholesale. So before I actually signed a deal with somebody, I had all the professional acronyms and in, in, um, visible signs of being a professional business. I had business cards made up. I have a business owner's policy, a BOP, which in ensures my business. It ensures merchandise that I buy from specific companies. It shows that I'm, I'm fully invested in this. Those are just part of it. I have a, you know, business cards that I hand out just for wholesale clients. I, you know, have talked to local distributors. I talk to the local factories and wholesale companies here to see what they make. And this is just part of it. For me, though, I've worked in um, corporations. I've worked in big industries. So for our, where I've worked, we've had the ability to actually do our own wholesale from a business standpoint. So I've been one of the people that walked into the wholesale. One of our big clients was Marriott Distribution Services, MDS. It's, it's a wholesaler. It's a national company. They do a lot of foods. You can deal with them as well directly, even as an individual um, selling products from there, if you have the business license and all the the paperwork that goes with it. A lot of these companies want you to have insurance because if somebody gets hurt from a product, they don't want it coming after you. The same thing goes with LLCs or S-Corps. If you're a sole proprietor, you're sunk for any deals or anything that goes bad. So that's another aspect when you're doing wholesale things that I look at. You know, for me, I literally went around and I called everybody locally who, who does wholesale, every single one. You know, you're not going to get in them all. Some of them are just going to blow you off. You know, it's knocking on a whole bunch of doors, as many doors as it takes, making the phone calls. Another aspect when you're going to these places, dress to the T, dress with the tie, the whole works, show that you are professional. Don't go in and just say, hey, I'm selling on eBay. You know, you're going to sell me some products. You know, the, just the people approach these wrongly. Um, you know, I have templates. I have forms that I've actually wrote out, you know, for purchase agreements and things like that. They're obviously going to have their own. 
having the forms, coming in there with the tablet, coming in there with proof of, of sales, proof of a business, proof of the EIN. These are all key 100% things that you have to do to get this the wholesale business going. This isn't just going to be a wholesale conversation today. I'm going to go on a little bit on the math. Um, you know, once you find these businesses too, then it's the, the fact of looking up to see what you can actually make money on. You know, just because they sell a couple hundred items doesn't mean any of that's going to be something viable for you to make some money on either. You know, you got to think of ROI, the sell through rate on those areas and, and those categories as well. After that has been set up or you get a, get some local deals, at least for us, we got local deals. I did get some local distributors straight from the factory. For Christmas items, we did get some wholesale deals um, with invoices. That's key for us. I have to get those invoices to get me ungated in certain categories on Amazon. That's the key to it, wholesale. And again, you have to have an account on eBay or on uh, Amazon, a wholesale account, a professional account, basically, which you pay $39.99 for. We've had that for a long time before we actually were able to do you know, wholesale. We had to be able to prove to, to Amazon as well that we can sell and keep you know, everything going for a certain length of time. Nowadays, we get ungated on pretty much everything we send in these days, automotive and all kinds of areas that other people have problems getting. My, my key getting into Amazon and getting into FBA and areas that other people haven't been able to get into is persistence and having invoices. You know, there's so many areas where you're, you're blocked out just for the fact that you can't produce an invoice to Amazon. That's where wholesale comes in. Once you run gated into a category, you know, it's pretty easy. Now, obviously, there's certain brands that you, you won't be on gated for, like Nike, for instance, or something along that line. It's really hard to get on gated without producing an invoice. And for Amazon, for those of you who are trying to get new into Amazon, an invoice is not a receipt from a, you know, a big box store. That is not an invoice. An invoice is like a wholesale bulk purchase directly from a licensed, and then the key is licensed distributor or wholesaler that has permission to actually sell you those items. They're legit items. They're U.S. You know, authorized items. They're items that can go on, on Amazon straight way out. So, you know, that's key. You can buy all you want from some people and have them not be legit items, and then you're going to get in trouble. Some people get in trouble selling on Amazon because they're selling bootlegs and didn't even know it because they went through a foreign distributor and ordered it bulk into this country. So that's just some of what I personally see, reasons people don't make it in here. I'm going to go and we're going to explain a couple other aspects of this. Um, one key area that um, I see a lot on are people misunderstanding a sell, sell through rate. So we're going to look at a sell through rate as well too. Now I'm going to look at this from a retail sell through rate. I did retail for a long time. I worked for Disney. I handled major accounts we purchased. I worked for um, Einstein Brothers, which is a, a national company. I handled purchasing there as well, too. I did wholesale. I did everything that you would do, you know, as a, as a, as a corporation or as a business into this. So, you know, these are things that I personally get into, things that I've looked into. So the retail sell-through rate for a company is basically their starting inventory. Um, and on eBay, you don't have that luxury. So, you know, a, a, um, a good sell-through rate is based on certain figures on eBay. I know other people are going to tell you otherwise. They look at, you know, what's active and what's not active, and they mix all these numbers together. If you're running a retail establishment, the numbers that they're looking at are beginning total. Now, the beginning total um, in a retail is, let's say on this example here, a 1,000 total listings that, that ended. Um, that's going to be the eBay beginning balance. That's going to be your inventory for eBay. Your, your starting number is the, the thousand listings that ended. Doesn't matter if they sold or didn't sell, there's a total of a thousand listings that ended on eBay in the last 90 days. And again, all of eBay's listings for comps are based on 90 days. So if a thousand items ended in a specific niche that you're looking at and only 625 of those sold, it's very easy to figure this out. You're dividing the sold listings by all ended listings. So in this case, we have 625 listings that sold out of a thousand. 
which gives us 0.625. You move the decimal point over, and you end up with 62.5% sell-through rate in that category. That is officially how corporate America figures out a sell-through rate in a store. Now, again, as I said, that 1,000 would actually be a starting inventory in a store. We can't do that with eBay because of the way it breaks it down. Now, I know other people will sit there and add in active listings. Active listings do not give you a sell-through rate whatsoever because some of those listings could be relists. Those listings haven't sold. There's no way to know if they're going to sell until they sell. So I don't look at live auction, you know, active listings for the most part, unless there's a trillion of them up there and, you know, they could sway the actual ended listings. For the most part, you have so much better data looking just at the, the ended listings. That is key to what I personally do and how I figure these numbers out. So if I'm looking at a item from a wholesaler, that wholesaler has a list of items. Sometimes you can get a database. They'll give you a link to their website and you can order them literally from their website. They'll produce an invoice. They'll set up, you know, shipment, procurement, whatever you want to call it in your, your line of business. And that's what, you know, you're looking for. You're going to track down the items on their inventory, their, their invoices, or their, their, I guess, you know, what they're actually selling, their actual items that they sell. You're going to track those down. You're going to look at them on, on Amazon. You're going to look at them on eBay. You know, you can do Shopify or any of these other features that you can do to actually track down, you know, Camel, 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 or any of these other things that you may do um, to determine whether you want to sell these. I can sell wholesale on eBay. I can sell wholesale on Amazon. I know they're they're getting rid of drop shipping and they're going after drop shipping. I have invoices for everything that we do wholesale. Again, it comes right back down to wholesale having the invoices. The invoices are 100% the biggest thing in my book. And back as when I said what I did to start with this, everything was in, in a row. I built up my, my presence as a professional person. Even if I hadn't signed the actual wholesale deal yet. I looked as though I was running wholesale for a long time because I had all my ducks in a row. I had a the EIN. I had my licenses, the correct licenses. I had insurance. I have documentation. You know, and once you've made your first wholesale deal and signed the first paperwork on this, it gets easier. You know, the biggest thing that I, I hear is you know, I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to ask. You know, you, you got to get all those out of the way. You've got to write down all the questions you want. Spend, you know, a, a couple hours figuring out what you need to ask, what you need out of a wholesaler. So when you sit down with a company, if you're lucky enough to get, get a sit down right away, you know what to ask. You're not wasting their time. You look like you researched what you are doing. Appearance is, is key. And I, I'm telling you, appearance is 100% key in getting these wholesale deals. You want to come in there like you're you know, a roller and, and you know when you, you can throw out the dollars. you got to have the money. you you got to try and get the right items, of course, too. But you've got to get in that door first. So retail sell-through rate is key when I'm looking up these items from these people. Once you're in the door, this is the next step. Knowing what's going to sell. Knowing how good the sell-through rate is in that area. Now, for some items like vintage and stuff, I don't worry about a sell-through rate. But wholesale in RA, you have to know your sell-through rate. So th there's two different models in my store. I share with you my long tail model, my 90-day flip model and stuff, which is the antiques and collectibles. The other avenue that we do is wholesale, as I show you. So I'm going to go over just a few other features and things that we personally do. I'm going to talk a, a little bit about projections and um, you know, looking at your business from another standpoint too. When I sit down with people, you know, they ask, "What are you projected in, in sales? You know, what are you going through in business?" I do occasionally share with businesses that I want to work with my actual projections for my sales. You know, this helps. You know, I can I can break it down versus a, a wholesale you know, dealing here. So I'll do a projection on what I expect to sell in wholesale. I can tell them units that I sell in certain items. You know, I, I can give them an idea that I'm going to be a viable person to actually work with. This is something I do for everything. I do sales projections in any of my stores. I do them in niches. I do them across the board. I do them in wholesale. I track these daily. Not much, much to doing projections. I'm going to explain in a minute after I show you what a projection is, why it's important to your business when you're starting off, why you need to do this. Projections are nothing more than adding up your sales from a given time. So 
whatever day it is that you want to add them up for that, you start at the beginning of the month and you add up all your sales to that point. And then you're dividing it by the actual days in the range. And I'm going to give you a breakdown here in just a second. There's not much to a projection, but they are incredibly helpful to anybody doing them. I'm going to just pop up here and we're going to show you an actual breakdown on um, how to figure out projections and what they will do for you. I do projections, as I said, daily. I do them all the time. And I use my projections. I look at my last six years in sales day by day and look at the projections from those days. I can actually see the, the specific sales on the 23rd of January for the last six years. I can tell you whether I'm up, I'm down, where I should be, and I, I factor in an increase in my sales for that actual time frame. Here is a specific example of, of what I do. So today is the 23rd. I'm just throwing out a, a dollar amount here to make it easy. So let's say I, as of today, the 23rd, I sold $7,000 worth of items in this store. So I've got $7,000 worth of sales for the past 23 days. I'm going to divide that by 23, the number of days that sales total covers. So $7,000 divided by 23 equals $304.35. That's my daily sales average. This is what every retail establishment in the country does. Some do it by the hour, some do it by the day, some do it weekly. After you get that total, then all you're doing is multiplying at times the days in the month. January has 31 days as usual, and it comes to a monthly sales total of $9,434.78. That's what I'm looking at in my sales. So if this month I'm projected as the beginning of the month to do $12,000, I did another projection today. I'm now only doing 64.30 or 94.34 for this month. I'm down. That's why I say if you check this total every single day as you go, you're going to know when you're 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 lacking, what you're going. If you look at just eBay's uh, percentage, and they'll go, you know, they'll give you a number whether it's up or down. Those numbers are only for your top two selling categories that you sell in. It means nothing for your overall aspect. For, for businesses like us where we have multiple stores. Those numbers mean almost nothing to me when I look at them because my sales history in one category can change overnight with just selling a few items. We sell in 25, 30 different categories. So those numbers fluctuate. It does not give us an honest estimate. This paper-wise, this paperwork you do here, these figures are the only real way that I can give a good projection for my company. And with these, I know whether I'm down. If I'm down, I need to list some more items. I need to call somebody in. If I'm down, I need to you know, check maybe I can run a sale. Maybe there's items that have been up for a long time that need to be addressed. This is how you fix your sales. You have to instantly know when they're going on. If you drop one day and it drops your total down for the month on, say, the 15th of the month, you can address it right then and still pick up your sales. So at the end of the month, you still end up where you want to. That's what a business does. That's what a main store does. That's what retail does. That's what all the big boxes do. Everywhere in, in, in society or corporate America, that's how they do their business. They base it on projections. We do forecasting as well, which is looking ahead to you know the future so you can look ahead to next year. That's why I say I don't just look ahead a week at a time, a month at a time. I'm projecting out for the end of the year already. This is what corporate America does. You know, I've got more coming in than just, you know, a few little stores or something like that. So maybe I'm different than most people. But if you're planning on going big, you want to do big, you want to get into the big business, you want to do the high roller aspect of it, you want to be full-fledged, do FBA, break into wholesale and actually get the quicker money where you're not sourcing all the time, where you're not beating yourself to death trying to find stuff, this is the way in. you got to know your numbers to start off with. you got to have a good idea on, you know, as I said, the sell-through rate on these items. These are all key for, for what I personally do. This all works for me. So anyway, I'm not going to go into a whole big detail on this. I'm going to have some more videos covering, you know, some wholesale aspects that you can uh, look into for yourself and you can solve some of these issues yourself. I'll go into some more detail. I'll probably give you some sites. I go to trade shows too if, if no one's done that kind of stuff before. Trade shows can always be a good source for selling items, believe it or, or for buying items, I should say. Um, I'll hook up with somebody on, on a specific trade show 
and you know I can buy them straight from the manufacturer before they even hit the market in some cases so you know that's just what I personally look for and you know what helps me out in my business so anyway we're gonna get some questions in here um, if anybody has any questions um, I will open it up to it I know this is not my usual time so most people probably aren't expecting me to be on at this time but again it's nothing going on today this is the first for a long time the weather was terrible um, as I said there's just ice everywhere everything's closed down this the roads are sheets of ice they haven't salted my street at all you know um, so we're here we're, we're just doing our normal thing I've got some videos that we were working on well thank you big drift thrift um, hopefully um, the conversation with you went very well this past weekend um, I will have some updates on you big drift thrift um, I did find some more information out so um, I will get back with you on that too so again thank you for the the super chat I do honestly appreciate that let me go back up here. I know, again, I don't expect a ton of questions, so I do have some material we can discuss. Postcard guy, welcome from New Jersey Shores. I do do a lot of postcards, as you see. Welcome, Ship and Sunshine, Diane Matthews. Nancy, welcome. Um, PJ Fair. I'm sorry, my chat's not working the greatest. Fair brother, welcome, everybody. Packing items, yes. Um, my items have already been packed. I usually do that early in the morning. I actually got up this morning expecting to have to take my son to JRTC at 5.30, and um, school wasn't canceled to the last minute. So I ended up packing uh, real early in the morning um, just to get it out of the way since I was up. I didn't want to go back to bed because if I did go back to bed, I am not going to be very functional throughout the day. So, you know, that's just what I do. Um, thanks on the shirt shipping. Um, I buy these. Um, this is just what I buy. I mean, I love these um, redemption shirts and things like that. Um, I can't remember where I used to get them, but um, there's a, a sh place in the mall that used to carry these, and I've since switched off since they stopped carrying them. But this is the type of stuff that I wear. Uh, let me see here. Watch your videos. Made me check out records at church sales for the first time just sold my first record for 450 thanks for everything you're doing records sell really good um really well i should say um record wise i have a huge huge uh haul that we have coming out we purchased 7,000, roughly 7,500 records. They're in-house now. They're taking up a horrendous amount of space. So I'm going to show them in a haul video this week. We purchased them from a storage uh, unit. Um, it was a big ordeal. We had to do this actually this past weekend. It was eight below zero when we were doing it. So I only filmed footage when we were bringing them out from the car, from the garage, just because I there was just no way. I took our, our GoPro out and, and it actually fogged up coming from the car outside and it was just miserable. I couldn't use it with my gloves off and it was just so cold with the wind chill factor that um, it just wasn't a pleasant experience um, on loading and loading up a, a vehicle in the middle of uh, 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 severe uh, weather like that. So anyway, it was blowing uh, snow all over the place. It was just terrible, terrible, terrible. And we had to actually unstack from shelving and box up all these records, random records. So I, I probably mixed them all up. He said I was told they were in order when we, when we bought them, but who knows at this point. So I haven't looked through any of them, so it's going to be a first when we do it on the video. So for those of you who are interested in records, you're going to see a huge, huge lump sum of them. Um, you know, it took quite a few uh, hours to actually unload these and, and um, bring them back. We took several trips. If you haven't messed with records a lot and you buy in big bulk like we do, records weigh a lot. I mean a ton. So 7,500 7, records weighs thousands of pounds you know I, I wouldn't even begin to guess so I didn't want to load my my van down and, and do any stress to my shocks or the vehicle itself so just FYI you'll see that video out hopefully it'll be out Saturday um, we might even um, I was debating on doing it alive but I think that would probably be impractical just because we'll be moving big boxes around you'll see a different area of our, our facility here um, we're going to do it in the back where we watch movies. We've got a big 10-foot screen and uh, a big wraparound sofa, and you'll get to see that back area there. Um, we actually use that same area to preview like 8mm films before we sell them. I'll project slides up there and things like that, too. So we use it for business as well as pleasure, too. Um, but again, I I'm going to start going into some more on wholesale and things like that that we do. Um, I, I started wholesale like maybe a year and a quarter ago or so 
we've done FBA. We didn't used to do FBA. We used to do, um, well, I'll take that back. We did FBA for a while. We quit doing FBA when, when they raised the book fees, and then we stopped. We started again in the last year or so doing FBA again, and more RA, uh, because again, Savers closed down. When Savers closed down, both of them in our area, we actually switched our business up. So we were able to move from clothing and books to other avenues. So uh, RA became a, a key factor here in one line of our business. We run two stores. So one store I do mostly antiques and collectibles, which is the one I share with you. Another store we do a lot of antiques and collectibles, but we do more wholesale and RA on there. I don't give out a lot on that again because if someone gets into your category, your area, they can flood the area um, and just pretty much wipe you out on your business wise. Drop your profit margins way down. When you're doing wholesale, you're working on small margins for the most part. You're, you're counting on volume to make it for you. So I'll take items on wholesale that I may only make $1.50, $2 profit on. Same with RA in most parts, but I'm going to be looking at quantity in those. I don't have to restock. It's one specific listing. I can just relist that item when, say, a, a thousand of them are out, or I want to pull it off because the market's flood, and I can just list another item instead. You know, I have many sources for, for getting my merchandise. So as I said, this last season, we did a ton on retail arbitrage, RA. Last season, we did a ton on Legos. Legos was the bomb for us. We were able to source at Burlington Coat Factory, Ross's, um, TJ Maxx, and stores like that quantities, not a lot from each one. One store we were lucky to get, say, six. Another store I got seven. Some stores we were lucky to get 20 different Lego items to sell. And then it's just a matter of popping them on. So if you're on gated in, in Amazon, it's the bomb. If you're not, a lot of these items will still sell on uh, eBay as well, too. Legos were hot. We sold bunches of the elves. The elf sets, for whatever reason, I, I'm assuming they thought they weren't going to sell, or maybe stores that had them weren't selling them. So we did rake out on some of those. Our average profit margin on the elves Lego sets were around 30 to 60 bucks a piece, depending on the specific set in when we started. When we first started selling them wholesale or, or um, RA, we were actually able to get a lot more for them. But as more and more people jumped on and saw what was going on or were able to find similar items, my profit margins went down a little bit. But again, I was still paying almost nothing for them. And, and again, it was just specific types of Legos. That's what you look for. I scan everything when I go out. So Shopify or whatever you're using to do, do your scanning. Amazon's app works fine. So you, you do need some more information. If you're good on sales ranking, you know, and, and know where you want to be in, say, toys, what's what's like the top five or eight percent. That's usually what I want to get if I'm RAing something. I want to get the, the best items I can get. I usually don't go up higher than eight percent um on the items that I'm looking for. It has to be in the top eight percent of the toy category, or whatever category I'm going into. Um, 5%, obviously, the lower the percentage, it, or I guess that would be the highest. The higher the, the ranking is, so if it's 5% or up to, say, 1% or 2% ranking, it's going to sell pretty quickly, and you're fairly safe on most items like that. So you can set up, you know, keys inside, um, like Shopify or some of the other, or not Shopify, um, I can't think of the name of the, the app we use, but the, we use three or four apps. So some of these apps that you use, you can set up, so when you scan the item, it's actually going to show you, um, you know, where your ROI is and things like that. So these are all things that I, I look for and, and get into when I'm actually doing wholesale or RA. I'm not a big fan on actually scanning and videoing it in the store. Just my personal preference. I don't like to be bothered when I'm out there. I'm very strictly business. I ran into somebody who actually um, watched the channel and... and um, Apologize to you if, if, if you're on, but um, I'm not trying to be gruff when I'm in public, but I, I'm all business when I'm out there. I like to get my stuff done. I don't like to spend a lot of extra time doing stuff. I'm not a big converser. Um, so like when I did um, uh, books and stuff at, at Savers and stuff, people would ask you questions and stuff. And in all honesty, I'm not really there to, to converse. And I know it sounds rude to some people, but you got to be in a business uh, mode when you're in there. So I'm scanning, if I'm scanning books or whatever we're scanning, I'm just going, you know, record speed as quickly as I can to get it done with so I can move on to the next source. You know, I don't like to waste a lot of time answering questions when I'm in public. I'm not a real social person in all honesty. Obviously, you see me on here, but I, no one's right in front of me. I don't have to sit there and worry about, you know, a personal discussion. I can address it and deal with it in my own situation. So, 
you know, you got to have a big mindset here. Your, your goal when you're going out sourcing is to get to as many locations as you can and, and to scan or look through as many items as you can as quickly as possible. So apps are a tool. Um, whatever you do is a tool. And, and again, I cut people off. I'm not, not trying to be gruff or rude to anybody else, but my goal when I'm out is to, to do my work. I'm working when I'm sourcing. I'm not playing. I'm not goofing off. That's the mentality it takes me to, to get what I to get where I'm at to, to get the items I, I, I buy. You know, it might mean the difference between half filling your van up or completely filling your van up if you're wasting time on certain things. If I'm out, I don't take a break, I don't eat, I immediately load up the van and I go straight to the next source. Um, especially right now, markdowns are all over the place. And I've talked about things that we personally buy. Fourth quarter is over. I wiped out most of the the um, deli departments and the bakeries and most of the grocery stores around here for leftovers from the um, Christmas stuff. Like uh, what I buy is walnuts and pecans. I buy those in big bulk, 5, 10, 15, 20 pound boxes that the, the grocery stores get in and they expect to sell a bunch for Christmas. Well, this Christmas wasn't as good as last Christmas for a lot of the bakeries. So I was able to really score out and get sealed cases of a ton of stuff. And as well, right now, a lot of the Christmas gift items like coffees, teas, and things like that are huge right now for RA. You can get them across the board. There's tons of videos. I've seen three or four different uh, YouTube channels talking about the coffees and stuff, the K-Cups and, and View Cups, and all of that kind of stuff is hot right now. We buy a lot of it. You know, it's not just one specific brand. A Caribou blend right now is in clearance all over the place, so I'll holler you out that to you now. Caribou... Uh, brand, um, it's the Kerrig, the, the K-Cups are what we bought. I bought like 62 of these in the last two days on Ferrari. I don't have one sitting here because I think the wife's already shipped them all off. But literally, those are the kind of things we're, we're looking for. It's very easy to get um, ungated in uh, Kerrig, believe it or not. Um, and you can actually sell anything that has their name on it if you're ungated in that. So we've got the, as I said, the Caribou blend. That's the, the actual blend. That's the actual kind of coffee that we got a ton of. They're 32 count packages that are on the shelves in clearance right now. I bought them from like nine or 10 stores yesterday alone. They're running at 828 is what I paid for them from Kroger's was the one. There's uh, Food Savers and Save a Lot. I'll have them right this minute here in the northern area where we're at. So those are items that I sourced. I've already mailed them off. Return on the investment, they're going for $28 right now. It could change once more people get them up. Mine are already in there. We did sell a few uh, fairly quickly on those. There's several different package versions of those. So look them up. Make sure you're looking up by the UPS on it. Scan them. So uh, again, that's what's going on now with RA for us. There's so many other areas that, that are coming around. As I, I gave you the, the wholesale on the bakeries. And, and believe it or not, I've got deals with these bakeries. Obviously, a goal for any, any company like that is to not order extra, but they all do it. Everyone does. They don't want to be caught off guard. They do projections, just like I just went over are the projections that I showed you. The stores do projections for how many pies they're going to sell. They'll base it on the last two or three years. That's why I tell you that the sell-through rate is 100% important as our projections, so you can guesstimate on these. And you can use you know, other apps and sites to see, you know, what it sold for last year. If you keep track, like we sell the same item year after year after year. So I've done projections on these. I've got my own actual sales to base these on. I've used actual apps. I store that information. So I'm getting, you know, historic data from several years of doing this. So that's why projections are so important. As I said, every store that buys product does projections to guesstimate on how much of that product they will need. That's why things run out. Their projections are bad. Their, their, their stake in the matter is bad. They're, they're not up on what's hot or what's not hot at the time. So again, that's some of the things that I look at when I'm doing this. If you didn't see the beginning of the video, go back and watch that on projections. It's going to help your business. You're going to know where you're at. You're going to know your numbers. You're not just going to have to rely on, on online stuff. I don't do any cloud computing for financials at all, ever. 
It's just not safe. Everybody's hacked these days across the board. Everything stays in the house. I do it all the old fashioned way with Excel spreadsheets for everything. And then I can just literally turn those over to an accountant. If you're doing stuff on, on eBay and Amazon, you can do um, download them all into common deline delineated files, which will basically directly import into Excel. I can do that for PayPal. I can do that for eBay. I can do that for Amazon. So all of that's integrated. I don't have to worry about third party apps. Now, they are good for some things, but, you know, when you're doing this, you've, you've got to get your systems in place before you start rolling off. Part of the plus on RA in wholesale for us is the fact that I can, I have a limited space. I'm in a small, there's 1,200 square feet or so that, that we occupy right here. It's maybe 12,000 or 1,275 feet. For me, I can double what I sell by sending it off to someone else for them to actually fulfill it. That's why RA and wholesale are key to people like me. Or if you're in a small area, you've got a small building, you've got, you're working out of your, your basement, you're working out of your garage. As long as you've got an area to pack, you've got the basic equipment, you've got all the safety features, RA and wholesale are the bomb. There's, there's many ways to do wholesale too, so let me just shout these out, and then I'll, if there's any questions, you can pop those in here. For wholesale, some cases on wholesale, I will let them ship the item to the, the actual uh, buyer. They set you up with actual a access to their, their basically their database, their server. You can input the orders there, and they ship them out and fulfill them. Now, a lot of them don't do that. You're going to pay more for them to do that, that feature. They have a fulfillment center for these. It's kind of like Amazon, but they have their own fulfillment center. Other places, you can literally go like locally-wise. I have a actual factory manufacturer of some parts here that we do sell routinely. I can go and buy a skid or a pallet of those and bring them here, or I store them in a, a, a facility that I have a couple hundred thousand records in. So that's the other avenue. Or you can bring them into your facility, and then you can just FBA them and box them all up and send them in into uh, Amazon. That's your other choice. And again, back to the wholesale aspect of it. That is how I got into Amazon on gating in many different categories. I did wholesale and stuff that was unbranded or, or things like that, and it ungated me into a category. We actually are now working on toys, as you saw. So once we start marketing the toys, I will be considered a manufacturer on, on Amazon. We've got all the paperwork. We'll be registered. We're spending the $1,500 to, to federally register it in the whole works. And we'll be able to get ungated in many different areas because we will be considered a manufacturer of toys. Even if we technically don't make them, I can produce enough paperwork to show as of right now, we're producing them ourselves. But again, in the future, our goal is to have them produced by another company. And I do have another company that we actually have been talking with that actually produces stuff here in this country, plastic items and stuff too. So that is my key. That was my gateway into Amazon. So, you know, just a little touch on that. I know this isn't for everybody. I know I'm kind of going off key on what I talk about, but I get questions asked on this all the time. What, how do you get into wholesale? What do you do with wholesale? You know, it's just a matter of knocking on doors, making it look like you're that 100% professional company by having everything lined up. Things like a uh, business owner's policy, your, your your insurance that you have that you, you, you get for this. That's key to getting this. They have to know that you can cover merchandise that you buy and stuff. In some cases, if you're friendly with, with some, some merchandise and some stuff, you can have a 30-day payment plan. So basically, you can get merchandise ahead of time and you don't have to pay for 30 days, 90 days, whatever the case may be. I'm not going to go into the technical terms because you know there's more to it than that. I, I was a general manager and a regional manager in national corporations. We we did retail for national companies, so there's other ways and things that you can get these deals worked out. Some some cases I can get merchandise up front without shelling out a dime, you know, before I even list it. So I've got it listed, I haven't paid for it, and I can still be taking in money from it. But obviously I have a net due at a certain point where I have to shell out a certain amount of money. Sometimes I have to put out a deposit on the merchandise to hold my order. Obviously some cases, if I'm going to a factory, the merchandise is not actually produced until I put a deposit down. So for like Christmas, 
items that I actually sell, decorations or whatever I happen to be selling this year, I have to put a deposit down. I've already put a deposit down this past Christmas for this coming up Christmas, believe it or not. So a retail store buys a year, a two years in advance. So those are just things that you have to look at on that too. So what you see mostly, um, as I've said, is the antiques and collectibles side because I don't share a lot of what I do that makes us the money. So once you open up, like if I shouted out elves, Lego elves at a specific store, everybody in their world would be going out and finding those items at the store and then I wouldn't get them here. There's a lot of other wholesalers and YouTubers in my state, so I do have to be very cautious on the competition that could flood my market. So, and if you, there was a video I posted this morning about stickers and Chinese competition and other countries' competition. Those are, are key factors into this whole atmosphere on here. You don't want competition in your area. You know, so I'm not going to share a lot, lot with you. I'll call out some things here and there. The coffee is still ongoing, the K-Cups and things like that. They're all Christmas holiday packages. They sell incredibly well on Amazon. You know, you're going to double your money. It's actually more than that at this point, even after fees. I think we're making like $11 or so each one of the, the Carrig boxes that we sell. So anyway, I'm just going to be a few more minutes here. We'll just see if we have a couple questions here. Um, again, hit the like button again. I know a lot of people aren't expecting me on. So um, I do have a live video tomorrow, Thursday night. Um, we're going to have, you know, my wife will be on too. So there'll be two of us on here. I may discuss some other issues. I've got some items that we've picked and, and some haul items maybe to show you. Um, and I do have a bolo coming up today. It's not going to be a long one, but there will be a bolo out this evening as well too, or shortly after that. Let me see here. What is your policy for purchasing? Hang on just a second. My, my feed is terrible sometimes. Let me pop back up here. Uh, purchasing shipping insurance for domestic international sales. Do you bother with third-party providers like ship cover, ship insurance? How has your experience been with claims? Um, basically, I ship most items um, other than a few select countries through the global shipping program. With the global shipping program, as long as the item makes it to eBay's facility, which for me is Kentucky, and I believe most people uh, send their items to Kentucky, once it reaches the facility and it has been checked and is being delivered at that facility, if it gets damaged, lost, or, or anything happens to that package being shipped overseas, eBay will cover it 100%. I know people say that's not the case, but I 100% tell you that is. eBay has covered a broken disc that was damaged and crushed going overseas to France. Um, I don't ship anything over four pounds directly to a specific country. So a record like a 78 would go through global shipping for the most part. I do ship, again, small items that are four pounds and under, which is the first class international shipping rate uh, cutoff point is four pounds. So I do ship to um, England, France, Germany, um, Canada, uh, let's see, Australia, um, straight out. Those are countries, and Japan too. I, I ship directly to those countries because the tracking to those countries tracks to the doorstop of those folks in those countries. So I've never had an issue where I had to file a claim there. I have had some issues filing claims in this country once or twice in the last three or four years. I have not had a damage item other than that global shipping program item in years. I, I can't tell you when the last item was that it was destroyed in shipping. It's been quite some time. If you watch my packing videos, you can see that I pack way overboard and everything. So that's that's my take on it. I pack, you know, very, very um, well on everything. Packing is key. So I don't really have any, any uh, claim issues. Shipping wise insurance, if it's like, say, a thousand dollar record going to the UK, I will send that um, registered. I will do the trip down to the post office on a thousand dollar record and do it that way. If it's under a thousand bucks, usually I take a shot at it. I've never had one loss to the UK record wise. So, um, you know, that's my experience with it. Claims with the US post office can take you some time. It could be 60 days down the road. The post office doesn't consider an item lost till I think it's maybe it's 30 days or something like that. I think eBay is 14 days or 10 business days, I think is eBay. Once an item doesn't show any tracking for 10 business days on eBay, they can consider it lost. The, the post office is a different story. Like a, like if you go and try and trace something that's lost, you're not going to get the item unless you're paying for priority mail. So if you're just sending it, you know, just cheapo, you're, you're not going to get the, the tracking on it as well, too. So 
Third party wise, I don't do the ship insurance or any of the other features on there. I just go straight through the post office. I know people say that the post office won't cover you on collectibles and vintage items. That's just simply not true. I usually just go in there in the past. Again, it hasn't happened in a while, but when I have had to do it, I usually go in there with a printout of the actual sales record and a printout of the actual listing if I need to and the item or I'll send that to the, the buyer and they will submit it that way as well. So that's usually all it takes to to get your claim filed and processed. But again, it takes some time with the post office. I'm in no hurry to get the money back as long as I know I'm going to get it. I don't care if it takes 60 days or whatever. We've got, you know, slush funds and, and bank accounts and all that stuff. So that's part of part of why we do this. And, and to help yourself out when you're sending stuff out, send it out immediately. Don't let it wait. The sooner you get it out, the sooner that money is going to clear, the sooner you're going to know that you're able to spend the money. A lot of people will spend it as soon as it comes in. There could be an issue with the item and then they file a return and then your money's locked up. So I don't spend anything um, extra until the item's gone. And, and for us, it just sits in, in PayPal for a while. We transfer, I think, maybe once a week or something along that line. Once it hits a certain dollar amount, we transfer out of our PayPal accounts. I never leave too much in PayPal. I just never trust that they won't lock it up for some stupid reason. So um, that's just what I think about on that. Uh, good day, uh, Disney Family 515. Hello, Dad's Vintage Garage. Let me see where we're at. Again, my, my feed's usually awful here. Trend projections, forecasts, ship and sunshine. With RA, you've got to do some projections. You've got to see... Projections will help you with like RA to see how the sales are fluctuating. You can look on other, other apps and things like that. I'm not going to give, get, get into the other apps because a lot of the, what we have are paid applications that I, what I use. You know, there's certain limited things that I can share because it's not really violates the policy basically on some of those. So I'm not going to go into the details on the apps. But with projections on like RA, you can tell, let's say you, you're looking for an item and you can see how it's been going. It started off selling really high, $60 on day one that you first found this item. And then you've watched it track. It's dropped down to 30 40 back up and down. You can kind of project on where that, that's going to end up. You can kind of project on how many you know people are selling it. You know That's just what I use projections for. I can project income. I can project out. I do forecasts on what I expect to sell based on trending information. There's projections you can do for pretty much anything. Um, but I do that for everything. I project my sales. I can kind of judge when they're they're not going well. If it's projected out and my sales are going down from what I expect and there's nothing else I can do to fix it because it's flooding, I might even move it to a different area. I might move it to eBay or, or put it on a different platform. We do sell on other platforms, obviously. So, oh, Let me see here. Amazon Seller 99 Cloud Complete uh, Solutions are safe as using your own computer unless you're a Faraday cage. Cloud computing is not safe. I don't care what anybody says. You can look at all the hacks that happen constantly. Google was just actually breached. A lot of the Play Stores were breached just the other day. People's photos are stolen. Anything on the cloud can be hacked. I guarantee it 100%. You don't even have to be an expert in hacking. You just have to go into Tor and download the apps to hack. I mean, we did it in school. I can pretty much hack into almost anything with, with a, a simple app from a, a, a dark web page. So I'm telling you that none of those are safe. I don't care what anybody says, any IT guy, and I have two IT degrees. I have many safety classes under my belt. You know, it's the only way you get a networking certificate, which I do have. I'm certified through Microsoft as well. None of it's safe. I don't care what anybody tells you. It is not safe whatsoever. Half the stars on the planet will tell you that with all their adult photos that have been shared, private photos between husbands and wives. Nothing is safe in the cloud. People can shut the site down even just for fun, like a, a DOS attack or something like that. People hack into the government sites, for crying out loud. So don't fool yourself into, into thinking that these online sites are safe. I don't share share my bank account information on other sites as well either. It is just not safe. The only ones I share are the ones I'm required to share, you know, so it's just a key to what I do. Cloud computing is not safe. You're going to run into these issues. I can promise you that you're going to have some issue at some point because of cloud computing. You know, sites are hacked 
all the time. And I mean all the time. I don't care what you do. Sites can be hacked. Just look at the Department of Justice has even been hacked for crying out loud. So if you're telling me that Amazon or these third party sites are so much safer than Amazon, I just can't buy it. Just like Am or like uh, Facebook being hacked so many times and people's accounts being hacked and actually being compromised. For those of you who've seen the goading on, on, on Facebook sites, Facebook prides themselves on your safety, but it's just not there anymore. It's constantly hacked. Your information is constantly f is found out through these online sites. There's people that just live to hack and do this. They make money doing it. So, you know, you, you, you can't tell me anything else. I've taken the class. I've got certificates. I've got an IG, uh, IT degree. I've got a master's as well. I took internet stuff throughout my entire time in college. I'm telling you right now, it's not safe. All you got to do is open the news and type in the word hack on any Google search. And almost every company out there has been hacked. Your information and such forth. Just like your information online is hacked when you put in charge card numbers. If you haven't been hacked, I would be shocked because most people, including myself, who was very cautious, has been hacked. And that's part of the reason I don't share uh, my, my banking information. That's part of the reason I don't do online cloud computing and banking. It's just not safe. You know, I promise you that's the case. Any college professor who's teaching it's going to tell you the same thing. Don't do it. Anybody who's in the field in, in security is going to tell you, unless they're trying to market you their service, it is not safe. Um, enough on that, but that's, that's the case. That's the key. That's the honest scoop on cloud computing. Yeah, Toys R Us, obviously they're down, but Toys R Us, we did make some money on. You can can get that there. Yeah, again, Amazon Seller 99. A lot of people that I find are afraid to walk into the office to talk to a wholesale company. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. Spend your time and write out this stuff. Practice with your wife or your husband. We're a, we're a couple team here with the kids working for us and all that too, obviously. I practice if I have to, you know, go over a speech, write it all out ahead of time, what you want to say, rehearse it, know what you're going to say ahead of time. This, you're just not going to just walk into someone's office and hope to get the deal. You have to have what your ducks in a row, know what you are doing, know how you've, you've, you're going to approach these people, know what you want to ask, have all the questions in hand. You know, that's just key. You know, I bit the bullet, you know, even coming on YouTube, I was nervous. I spent a year before I actually did it. So uh, nowadays, with my son issues and medical issues with my son and stuff, I'm just going to do it. I don't care. I don't care if I look like a fool, if something I do doesn't go over well, like my Kickstarter or whatever we're doing. I don't care. I'm not going to know if I can succeed in something unless I try it. So we're trying everything we can, anything that, do, that, that we can. If it doesn't work, I just try something else. It's just not that big of a deal for us these days, you know, so just keep that in mind. Give it a try. Give it a shout. Things work that you may not know will work. So like going into a wholesaler or a distributor. That, that's just the, the, the breaks there. Professionalism, making it look like you're a professional business. Come in with a, you know, a, a binder or something that you can you know, open up and, and look at figures. Have papers there with you. Have copies of documentation that show you have insurance and that you've got a business plan. You've got a means to sell the products that they're talking about. You have a storefront. I mean, these are all key things that I did to get into wholesale. You know, it's, it's a no-brainer once you get into it. Once you get into the first door, you won't be as nervous. You'll know the questions to ask. They're going to ask you a lot of questions. I can pretty much tell you. Why would they? They're going to ask you questions. Why would, why would we want to trust you with our merchandise? What about our, our brand name? Are you going to hurt our brand name by not marketing it correctly? There's just so many other things you have to know. RA is one thing. RA, you're just buying something already on the market and flipping it. Wholesale is a different monster. We, we The first couple wholesales didn't go super well. We did make some profit, but it wasn't a plus. So you're going to have to try many different items. You're going to have to try different suppliers. One of the, the key things that I like to go to are trade shows because you can hit them up before they actually get big. You know, you're taking a chance, so, you know, there's, there's more chances in it. But if you're wise... You can do uh, comp searches on similar items or similar categories. A trade show can be a key area where you can have stuff signed. You won't have to put up as much money, too, if it's a new company, usually. You know, they're, they're more wanting the business to, to advance their own company. So those are just avenues that I look at when I'm doing this, you know. That's how we got into it. So if you didn't see the beginning, I talked about key things that I did. Look into that. Look at the beginning of this video here. So... I'm not going to talk much, much longer here. This is just a touch on it. Again, don't be afraid to try something. 
you know, everything's a risk. Everything you can lose at, but you're never, ever, ever going to know unless you throw your cards out on the table and you try it. So I may holler out some items here on RA once we've wiped out our area um, starting in the future. Um, because I do get a lot more questions on that. My love is the antiques and the collectibles and the vintage. I love music, so for me, records are... Uh, I'll never give up what we do. We'll just have more people helping us in spreading it off into different areas, so... Um, Disney Family 515, I don't have to ever worry about um, changing my shipping on anything because we do calculated shipping and the buyer pays for all shipping. That is the number one thing that I do that alleviates any hassle on that. As long as your weight's correct and has the packed shipping weight in it and you know the dimensions are correct, you never have to go back in and change it because it's based on eBay's current value on shipping. So whatever the, the cost is on, on uh, from the UPS or the U.S. Postal Service, that's what eBay calculates into your shipping there. And um, that's literally what I do. So if I calculate shipping for everything, I never have to go back in and do it. I've got business policies that do everything. So even if I did have to go in, like one store, if I've got 25,000 active items in there, I can hit a couple of links and alter all of them at once, depending on the weights. So I have a different policy for each weighted item. So like, let's say first class international goes from, you know, uh, one ounce to four pounds. So that's one specific policy. So if I need to address that, I can just change that. So that's what I do with, with shipping on, on the items. Uh, it's calculated shipping. Buyer pays all shipping fees. I charge uh, flat out if it's uh, a three ounce package. I charge three fifty. I do get a discount, so it's only like two sixty six. Um, I don't know what the current rate will be, but it's two sixty six is what I pay um, to actually ship that item. It covers the ten percent shipping uh, charge that eBay levies on the money I collect for shipping. So that covers the the thirty five cents. It also covers my shipping supplies. So I don't pay for shipping supplies, and I don't pay for the shipping itself at all for my collectibles, the, the store that I share with you, my Modern Market, I don't pay for shipping. Now, the other store that I have with wholesale and stuff, there are some that I do include shipping or I do it differently too. So you can't use the same model that I use for my vintage for new and wholesale stuff. It just doesn't work that way. So, you know, you, you got to address it, you know, as the, the different categories are. So one category, you can do it one way. Another category, you can do it another. If you're selling clothes, you cannot do um, you know, charge shipping on most items because you'll be flooded with other competitors and you won't have um, the competitive edge because they'll be actually giving shipping away. That's part of the reason why I avoid certain items and clothing and things like that. Obviously, if I see some real high dollar item or a pair of shoes or something, I would probably still buy it if it's going to be a quick flip for me. So, you know, that's just some other areas that we look for into this. Uh, let me see here. What can I sell to get a good start on Amazon FBA? Books. Books is still a viable market for me. The fees went up, so I don't mess with books too much because it's a lot of time consuming. You have to go to a lot of places, and I don't have as many sources to get books as I used to. Uh, savers used to be big, or the, the big book sale, local book sales. There's one going on here in this area, actually. One of the libraries is having a book sale. It'll be packed with scanners, I promise you. Some sales that you go to for books, though, will say no scanners, or, or they will intentionally turn off the internet. That's where third-party apps come into play, where you can download the database and you can still go on scanning while you're on location with no internet. So that's why I pay for extra apps and stuff like that. So I'm not going to promote any specific apps, because there's several of them that will do the same basic thing. So... Um, anyway, books for, for uh, FBA would be the number one thing I could tell you. Toys, most people are going to be gated in. Um, most people are gated in, in uh, automotive supplies and things like that, too. So toys are usually pretty easy. Once you start selling some things on there, it'll be real easy once you've shown Amazon that you can produce sales and, and still keep your five-star rating. I've been on Amazon for you know a year and a half, two years, selling collectibles too, um, because we dropped out of FBA for a while when we stopped doing books, so my account was lacking. So what we did is we got approved to sell vintage collectibles. We sell collectibles on there. We sell records on there as well, too, vintage vinyl and stuff like that. Historical items we sell on there as well. Now, for like an example, you, you have to play things out. For us, I was able to... Um, see which is a viable category or which is a viable site to sell records on. Now, obviously, eBay is still number one. Discogs is right up there, too, for certain records. But for us, I sell a ton of 78s, and the number one site I sell 78s on is Amazon. 
Amazon 78s, for whatever reason, just go all the time. I sell them daily on Amazon, whereas some 78s it may take a day or so to sell them on eBay. It may take every other day I may sell a 78 on, on eBay. Some days on Amazon I may sell a whole bunch all at the same time in the same day. So, you know, you just have to play out which market's best for some items. You don't necessarily have to do FBA to do RA. You can RA on, on eBay just as easily. So you can even do it on Etsy and some other places too, depending on the item. So anyway... Um, Shang Yil, I've actually got a video just covering calendars. If you go through um, my collectibles playlist, I have tons of videos up right now. If you want good content, I have like 350 videos up, all similar bolos and collectibles to look for. Vintage calendars are always good. Yeah, Amazon seller, your computer can be hacked. I've got several firewalls. I've got a subnet in my house, so it would take a little while. We've got, you know, extra security here. I've changed every code. There's no um, broadcast on my key, nothing else like that. Um, no one can tell my SSID or anything like that. Everything's hidden. Everything's blocked. I've turned down my actual Wi-Fi broadcast. I actually have mostly wired facilities, so Wi-Fi is actually off during certain times of my day, totally in the house and in my facility. So there's many things you can do to stop it. If you're not broadcasting Wi-Fi out of your house, that's one of the biggest things. People can roam in front of your house and actually pick up your, your Wi-Fi signal, believe it or not. So I'm very adamant on all that kind of stuff. I'm a... I'm a not so on security. So we have multiple firewalls. I have subnets in the house too, where my server in my house is, is broken off from the rest of it. So you'd have to get through several sources to get into here. You'd have to go differently. You'd have to go online wise, you know, and, and again, I change my passwords weekly, sometimes even sooner than that. It just depends. And I've got a rotational password uh, list. I change them for different sites. We never use the same password on any specific site more than once. We don't do similar passwords. I don't change numbers just to continue using a password. Everything's different. Nothing is a word. Nothing is anything that would be uh, tied to any specific person. So that's just key to this. So I know a house can be can be hacked. We did, you know, practicality tests in IT class and safety classes. I have a net, net um, uh, certificate, net plus. I've got a safety plus. I've got an A plus certificate. So I know all the do's and don'ts. We did DOS, uh, uh, DOS attacks. We've done, you know, denial of service. All the attacks, all the, the, the break-ins you can, you can um, think of. We downloaded um, hacking software to try and hack it and see how we could prevent it. So these are things you did. I spent six months, two different classes. Well, it would be more like eight months because there are like three and a half months of classes. I took two of those that extensively went in. So basically eight months of security um, classwork and stuff in actual real life um, incidences that we, we tried to uh, stop and, and stuff with. So that's just what I do for safety. I'm not so on it. I, I across the board go into safety. And that's literally what I talk about a lot. And that's part of the reason I'm not as prone on Facebook because they were just hacked again. Email accounts were hacked on Yahoo accounts as well as the PlayStation just the other day. So, um, you know, if, if you were using the Play, Play Store, you would want to change your password as of last week. So, you know, keep up on this. I have Reddits we follow. I follow security websites as well, too. You know, we update our security. I will use malware bytes as well. Several other other um, security features. You know, I have root extractors and things like that, too. Um, and I, I malware bite, you know, every other day, usually. It's already set automatic to go in. I use Bellrock and some other, other um, things, too. And, you know, we keep information separate. Again, subnet in your house, multiple firewalls, multiple features in there. Stop open ports in your, your gateway. Um, I mean, there's many other things you can do, but that's just some of the things that we do. So anyway, yes, fa Facebook security is a joke. I will fully agree. Banks are hacked too. Just type in bank hack. That's all you got to do. You can find them as well too. Banks do get hacked as well. Our bank here in this, this uh, state has been hacked. It was an open thing. They get your email accounts. Sometimes it's it's hacked through databases. Some, sometimes it's infusions into a database. Back in the day, um, you could actually put code into a database because they weren't checking the security on it. That's how some things are, are hacked. You can ha I can hack into someone's um, um, internet or their... Um, a server inside their house through their actual um, print server through their printer that's the only thing i need to get into someone's someone's network that's literally how you can get into a network is through a print server so you know there's so many other ways to get into it all of that stuff's blocked everything in here even our, our wi-fi enabled 
uh, printers are, everything's turned down. My, my signal in general is turned way down in the house. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to have to cut it short here. Um, we do have some stuff going on. I will have some employees coming in, but I just wanted to touch a little bit on this. I will have a video still up tonight on a bolo. Um, it's already shot, already done, already canned, and I'm actually um, just waiting for it to upload as of right now. So, But I just thought I'd talk about this. As I said, I will be adding some more things into the channel, and we'll be covering some RA, some wholesale um, I might show you some forms on, on stuff and, and, you know, purchase orders maybe. Um, getting into Amazon is key. So that's why I say wholesale is your, your bomb to get on gated in a lot of categories. Um, starting and selling small. Start with books. As I said, books are always easy. You can always get in books on, on Amazon. Those are just areas that I look for. So anyway, that's about it for today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts on it. Hopefully that's helped to, to you folks. So anyway, I wish you good luck. I will be live tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, Ohio time. So I've got a bunch of stuff going on that we'll discuss there too. And uh, again, the wife will be here. You can ask some questions and we'll answer whatever we can. It's our usual live show. 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on uh, Thursdays every week. Wish you good luck. Uh, good evening. Uh, well, good afternoon, I guess. And I will talk to you later.